In today's episode, local songbirds Alfred Sim and Take Away await the arrival of their second child with joy and anticipation. Chomp on Chef Sarah Huang Benjamin's Curry Shepherd's Pie and Jetstar Asia's employees share their challenges on a different work front. Hello and welcome to Home Together. I'm Hosan Leong. Now, you know, being gainfully employed means more than just putting food on the table. It also means that it gives one the sense of meaning, purpose and recognition. You know, our government has come up with some relief measures, such as the Enhanced Job Support Scheme, to help save jobs, as well as to encourage employers to retain and retrain staff. I have the pleasure of inviting three employees from Jetstar Asia to join me today to share their experiences of what it is like now being on the ground within the community. Let's say hello to Darren, Jackie and Phoenix. Hi guys! Hi! Hi, I'm Jackie. <laughs> Hi! And that's Phoenix. And then there's Darren, of course. Um, you know, guys, when you first heard um, from your employer, Jetstar Asia, that flights are going to be temporarily suspended, right? Um, which means you guys would have been out of a job. So Darren, what was going through your mind when you heard that? Of course, I would be worried. How will I be able to fulfill my financial obligations? Sure. However, with Jetstar Asia going on, we have starting negotiations with CAS yeah. and the government, uh, governmental bodies for temporary jobs. I was very impressed that they were able to help us to find uh, quite a fair few temporary jobs to be placed into. And it's very heartening to see uh, that the company actually cares so much about us and our welfare. So Jackie, when when you when the opportunity came for of being able to do another job um, other than being a customer service manager or a flight crew, how did you feel? Did you jump at it and say, yes, I'm going to do this? Naturally, from a moment of dismay, I was like, oh, finally, there's something for me to look mm. forward to. So, yes, I was actually looking forward to it when it came to me. Did you get a choice to choose where you're going to be placed? Actually, during the briefing, um, KTPH staff had an available roles to us, and they were the one who, who assigned us, actually. Okay, so you're in Ku Teck Wat Hospital as a yes, service support officer. So, what does your job entail? So, I am currently um, assigned at MMD, Materials Management Department. Mm -hmm. So basically, the department is in charge of all the supplies for each department in the hospital, except drugs. And for you, Jackie, uh, with your yeah. skill sets, you're working in the Singapore Food Agency. Yes, as, as uh, SFA, yes, uh, mm. Safety uh, Distancing Ambassador. Ah, okay. So how okay. are your skill sets being used as a Safe Distancing Ambassador? <laughs> The skills are pretty much uh, similar, if you ask me. Uh, basically, as an uh, ambassador, we, we actually check on the patrons, we check on the vendors, we make sure that they put on a mask, they are following the rules of uh, one meter distancing when they are queuing for their food. As a cabin crew, customer service manager, uh, looking after the safety of my passenger is my number one priority. So we have to make sure passenger had their seatbelt on. Um, to prevent any emergency uh, situation so that they are protected. So it's very much similar. What about you, Darren? Darren, you're, you've been a pilot with uh, uh, um, Jetstar Asia for four years now. Your yeah. skill sets as a pilot, I don't know whether it does translate to what you do right now as a SG Clean Ambassador. Actually, for pilots, we have both technical skill sets and uh, soft skill sets. Mm. So for this secondary role that I'm doing, it's basically making use of my soft skill set mm. as communication because for what I do, I have to send across a very clear and concise message of what government is trying to um, spread out into the community of the safe distancing measures that they in place. Mm. As a pilot, I have to speak to, I have to communicate with my captain. Yes. I have to communicate with the air traffic controls right. and also with my crew. Yeah. I still have to, uh, there's always lines of communication going on in between different sets of parties that we are always working with. That's wonderful. Now, anything you want to say to encourage uh, maybe, maybe people who are viewing us, watching us right now? For me, it is important for every one of us to know that we have an important role to play. You know, we have to abide by the rules and regulations set by the government 
of Singapore during this circuit breaker. We are responsible for our children, um, the elderly, and just stay home if we can, as long as we can. And um, as a foreign worker here in Singapore, fighting this COVID-19 is not about having a specific culture or sp having a specific language, but it, it's all about knowing how, uh, how you can help in your own simple way, how to give back and to know your responsibilities and how you can execute them well. Well said, Phoenix. So thank you so much, Darren, Jackie and Phoenix. Please stay safe yourselves. Thank you. um, and thank you for the good work that you are doing within the community. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Stay with us because after the break, we are going to have local Mando pop couple, Alfred Sim and Takeaway, as well as a lovely dish by Sarah Huang Benjamin. Welcome back. Now, these two are probably Singapore's most recognized Mando pop couple. Let's say hello to Alfred Sim and Take Away. Hi, guys! Hello! Hey, how are you guys doing? Doing great. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Enjoying our couple time at home. You guys are a married couple. You have yes. got one child and a second one on the way. That's right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Both? It's taking when? up the whole screen. <laughs> yeah. When 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 is that happening? Very soon. I'm in my in the middle of my third trimester. So the thing is, um, it's been getting increasingly heavy. Mm -hmm. So luckily, I have my house husband right here. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Daily, he's just doing all the chores. He even <laughs> cooks, does the dishes, laundry, mm -hmm. everything. I just need to say, oh, oh you know, I'm very feeling good. very well today. Well done, <laughs> Alfred. Yay! <laughs> Now, Alfred, maybe you want to tell us, right, before circuit breaker, what is a normal day for the same family? In the morning, I'll be I'll be the first one to wake up mm. and I'll be uh, preparing the breakfast. Mm -hmm. uh, it's either I'll wake up earlier than the baby or I'll wake up together with the baby, prepare <laughs> milk and then I'll wash him up uh -huh. and then prepare the breakfast and then wait for the queen to wake up. <laughs> uh, yeah. So now, has life changed during circuit breaker? It's, it's almost the same, actually. No, it, I, I beg to differ because I feel things are very different. No more used to go to school. Yeah. Oh, yes. yes. Did you just forget that it was your past life? <laughs> <laughs> like, so he used to go to, to, school. to school? Yeah, and okay. then um, I would pick him up at about 4.30. Mm. So then I would have my own time to do my work and everything. And then now it's just he's at home all day. I think having the baby at home is just so much more different because we really have to engage with him. Mm -hmm. We have to keep him company mm -hmm. up. To be honest, right now, he's being, uh, his nanny is the TV. So as we're doing this work, uh, he's watching TV. How old is he now? Yeah. How old is Momo now? He's two and a half. Yeah. Not, not really a baby anymore. Huh? He's in his terrible too. So right now, it's very difficult to... We need to negotiate with him. Wow. He's like, everything we say, he says the opposite. So uh. it, it's, it's also a good time for us to really bond with him mm. before the second baby comes. Right. So. Because you both kind of work freelance, right? As performers and Alfred as a track and field coach. What are you doing to adapt to the situation? We are moving everything online. So we are getting clients to call us and then we just coach them online this way. Um, not everybody is willing to do that because of space constraint and things like that. So, mm. so of course, uh, business is now like cut more than half. But we are still maintaining some of the clients. Mm. Yeah. Okay, that's good to hear. So as performers, right, we all need an audience. That's how yes. we get our energy and we give energy yeah. to and from, you know. And it's such a wonderful experience. But now with all this, what are you guys doing about it? You're, you're live streaming, I hear. We try to do it every Friday uh, to do an hour of live streaming. Uh, mm. So we, we, we chit-chat and answer questions from our friends and uh, whoever who wants to come and listen to us. Mm. And then we do some singing. So Kawe will be one, will be the one playing. Oh, she's she's very good. She can play all sorts of instruments. Yeah, yeah. man. <laughs> Guitar, piano. We have to depend on ourselves now. Yeah, right. You're a one woman band. <laughs> yeah. And um, we get we've had a lot a lot of viewers. Mm. Yeah. I think I really like it this way because it's kind of intimate because they yeah. ask questions. 
if we can, we try to read the comments and then mm. after that we just reply. Yeah, straight. it's a totally different kind of interaction, but we usually feel really, we, we feel really um, happy about it, like okay. moral booster even. This is on yeah, which uh, platform? It's on my Instagram live. Uh -huh. and it's on my Facebook live. Wow! Yeah. So you guys are going to perform for us uh, a song. What's the title of the song? We wrote this song for our son, Momo. Oh. It's called Momo Ai Jin. Thank you so much for spending some time with us and sharing with us about your lives. Okay, so stay right there because Alfred and Kowe are going to give you this beautiful song, Momo Ai Jin. Hi, I'm Kaylee Lo. I'm taking this time to improve on my flexibilities, I can dance better, and also perfect my floral arrangement skills. You can always pick up a new skill or improve yourself. Make good use of this period. Most importantly, stay safe, stay sane, and stay positive. Welcome back. If you are already thinking of what to eat later during tea break, you are not alone. And our celebrity chef, Sarah Huang Benjamin, may well have a recipe that will keep you happy and satisfied. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah and today I am going to show you my curried shepherd's pie. It's the kind of dish that brings the family together so that you can still feel that warmth and love even though you're staying home. A shepherd's pie is a very traditional British dish 
but I am adding some curry flavor. First, I'm gonna put on my mask before I cook anything. First thing I'm gonna do is make my rumpa or spice paste. I'm a modern woman, I am gonna use my food processor, but if you feel like a workout, you can also use a pestle and mortar. So I'm gonna put in there some shallots. These are already peeled. Garlic cloves that are already peeled. Some candle nuts. These are a very traditional ingredient in rumpa. They give a lot of texture, but if you don't have them at home, you can leave them out. Some ginger that I've peeled and just sliced. And to make this nice and spicy like a curry should be, I have some dried chili paste. You can add more or less of this depending on how spicy you like your food. Just to help everything blend up really nicely, I'm gonna add a little bit of oil. And now I'll blend this until it's smooth. Once the spice paste is nice and smooth, we'll scoop it out of the blender. This is where a lot of the flavor in the beef filling is gonna come from, so we're gonna start frying that in the pot. I'm gonna get some vegetable oil into my pot, and I'll get this on a low to medium heat just to fry my spice paste up. You don't want the oil to be hot when you add in your spice paste, so just put it in. And we just wanna gently fry this rimpa to cook the shallots and the garlic through and to make sure all those flavors have mingled really nicely. When the raw onion smell has cooked off and you can see the oil floating above the rimpa, that means it's ready. And I'm going to add a stalk of lemongrass and a stick of cinnamon. And I am just going to gently bash open the lemongrass. I usually use the heel of my knife handle just give it a bash so that it opens up and you can smell those aromas coming up. I'm just gonna cut it in half. So I'm gonna add my one stalk of lemongrass and one stick of cinnamon into the pot. I've also got two tablespoons of curry powder. This is curry powder that is for meat. It's an amazing blend of spices, super aromatic. I'm gonna add that into the pot as well. And we'll just saute all these aromatics together to toast them a little bit and make sure they're super fragrant. And very quickly, I'm gonna add my minced beef. I'm using 600 grams. You can also use minced lamb as well for this. And just keep stirring to mix the meat up with the spice paste and the curry powder. I'm gonna add some chicken stock, but you can also use beef stock if you have some. And then I am going to add some coconut milk this is a curry shepherd's pie after all, so we really want that lemak coconutty flavor. Stir everything together. And because we've already tossed the minced meat with the spice paste, it's not gonna clump together. That is a secret tip that makes this lovely and tender. Before we leave this to cook, I am also going to add a couple teaspoons of soy sauce. This will give a lot of umami flavor and season this perfectly. A little bit of fusion, you know, Chinese ingredient, curry, shepherd's pie. I love having all these cultures in one dish. I'm gonna bring this to a boil and then I'll turn the heat down and leave it to simmer for around 30 to 40 minutes. We want it to be super tender and meltingly soft. While the stew is simmering away, I'm going to get to the topping of the pie, which is made of mashed potatoes, that glorious concoction. I've got a pot of cold water, and I'm gonna peel the potatoes, cut them, and drop them into the cold water. That stops them from getting brown. I'm gonna quarter the potatoes, and then I'll drop them into the pot of cold water. All my potatoes are peeled and cut. I wanna season the water, so I'm going to be adding some salt, and I'll boil these potatoes until they're really soft and tender and ready to mash. The potatoes are done, and you know they're done when you can poke a fork through a piece of potato really easily, and it's super soft, so I'm going to drain the water away. When the potatoes are well drained, just return them to the pot that's dry. I am going to add a little bit of butter just to help soften everything up and make it really yummy. A pinch of salt, and instead of milk, which is traditional, I'm actually gonna use coconut milk to make it really delicious and local tasting. 
Now I'm just gonna mash all these potatoes until they're smooth. Once you have a nice smooth mash, we're gonna set that aside and deal with our beef filling. As you can see, after cooking slowly, the minced beef has really absorbed all of the coconut milk and the stock, and it's smelling amazing. I'm going to take out the lemongrass and the cinnamon stick. These are just mixed vegetables that you can keep in your freezer, on hand, ready to go. I've got a mix of carrots, corn, peas, beans, that you can use. Whatever you have that's ready to go is good. So I'm just gonna throw them in. They're still frozen. And just let the heat of the beef stew to defrost them. They don't need to cook, they're already cooked. It's looking beautiful. So I'm ready to make my pie. I'm just going to take this beef stew and put it into the bottom of the baking dish. Just scrape out every last bit of the stew and smooth it out into a nice even layer. And we'll take the mash, put a nice even layer on top of the beef stew. You can use two spoons to help you. And then just use a spoon to help smooth out the mashed potato. Using your spoon, you can just make little swooshes in the mashed potato. And all those little kind of waves are gonna crisp up when I bake this in the oven. That's looking beautiful. So this is going to bake in the oven at 180 degrees Celsius for just between 20 to 25 minutes until it's golden brown on top and bubbling around the edges. It smells amazing, it's nice and crisp, and it's bubbling on the outside. It's perfectly done. This is exactly what I need when I feel like I need a bit of comfort food, creamy mash, flavorful beef. Mmm. There is so much flavor packed in there and all the textures work beautifully together. This to me is a perfect family meal. So even if you're not together physically, why don't you all make this at home, get on a video call and enjoy it together so that you can be together in spirit. It is so good, you will love it. If you know of someone who needs a listening ear or emotional support during this period, you may refer them to the National Care Hotline on 6202-6868. Manned by trained psychologists and counsellors, these experts can link those in need up with the relevant social service agencies. I'm Hosan Leong. Be strong, be safe and be kind. I'll see you soon. Cause home is never free.